What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down why on Earth tomorrow is going to be a very important day for the stock market because PCE inflationary data is coming out. I'm going to break down how this could cause the market to move, why there's going to be a very big move tomorrow based off what is reported, what the data is telling us about Neo right now, and what I do believe could likely happen to the Neo share price going into tomorrow. Now, before I break anything down, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting firstly i'm not a financial planner make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever and also if you guys can please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this it not only benefits me it benefits the entire neo community as a whole and the last thing is if you guys can please check out the weeple link down below and in the description if you sign up for weeple the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account you're guaranteed up to 12 free stocks each valued at up to three thousand dollars and the best part is any could be a free neo share a free tesla share or a mix of all of them it's a limited time offer the offer ends in just five days make sure you check it out before they run out with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. Neo is down almost 4% for the day at the time I'm recording this, which is actually almost an hour before market close. I'm recording this a little bit earlier than usual, but the thing is, Neo did end up breaking below the $10 support zone, as I did predict in my previous videos. Now, going back many months, guys, I was showing you guys this formation right here. Let me just show you what it was. Neo basically, you know, was forming a top way back here, way back here. And I told you all, this is likely forming a giant head and shoulders like formation right here. And I did expect Neo to slowly start to decline as the months went on, as the weeks passed on. And that is what ended up happening. And then as Neo ended up breaking down, I mentioned to all of you, we're going to likely start testing the tens. That also ended up happening. Now, as we started testing the tens, we, we just started bouncing off of it over and over and over again. And I mentioned to you guys, that's likely not going to hold now because we keep on retesting it. And overall, the trend in the market is likely going to start dictating NEO to the downside. And as a result, the market overall did not come down that hard, but we did see Neo finally get the break below there as there was an excessive amount of shorting very recently. I can actually show you right here. We did see the short interest increase during times like here and also different times right here. We saw an extra few million shares shorted just a couple of days ago. Once again, bringing down the Neo share price, but that's not all there was to it. We did see some more capitulation once we ended up seeing $10 consistently being tested and actually breaking. Now, as far as technicals go, NEO does tend to be green on Fridays 53% of the time. And the good thing is we are getting some nice buy ratings, but NEO's price price ratio is getting very closer to the very low value, almost the lowest value we've seen in months. This is telling us that NEO still has relative weakness. And on top of that, NEO's volume is actually very close, if not higher than the average volume. So now it's starting to drop on higher volume, which is not the best of signs. Now, there are many technicals pointing in the uh, direction that NEO could come down. The current price versus volume ratio is at about 49%, which is telling me that right now the, the buyers and sellers are kind of mixed, but I do think this is going to increase a little bit as more selling pressure continues. So right now, technicals are telling us that NEO is still showing some weakness, and we're testing a very important demand zone between 9.5 and 9.58. We got to bounce off 9.58. However, there are other things you have to know about whether or not this thing is going to just, you know, push up back above 10 or continue to fall into the nines. And that is going to be tomorrow. We have the notorious PCE inflationary data coming out. This chart right here is the core PCE. And notice the last four bars right here. I don't want to cover them, so I'm going to move my cursor, but just look at the last four bars. You will notice that there's been a decline every single month for the last couple of months. And that tends to not be sustainable during a time like this, meaning that when inflation comes down, it tends to not come down in a straight line, in my opinion. We could get another like pretty you know decent report again, but there are many signs pointing at inflation ticking up again. If you look at PPI was a little bit hot, we saw CPI was a little bit hot. PCE is likely going to be, in my opinion, either as expected or maybe even a tiny bit hot. That's very possible, but we have to still wait and see. And what else is very important is the Fed is going to make their decisions based on PCE as well and the jobs data. Right now, the jobs data that came out is suggesting that the jobs market is still a little bit stronger than what we want it to be. 
the numbers came out at about 192,000 jobless claims. And we wanted there to be at least 200,000. So we were just short of that, meaning that the jobs market is still holding up a little bit better. The GDP numbers, however, were actually pretty decent. We actually saw some nice growth on the price index quarter over quarter. And we also saw the same thing happening with GDP sales. Some things were as forecasted, other things were a little bit lower. And overall, it was pretty much mixed overall in terms of GDP data. Now, there are many Fed speakers saying we need a 50 basis point rate hike. There are other ones saying we want 25. The Fed is kind of mixed, but we do know they're going to continue to tighten and the market is still pricing that in. Now, NEO is going to build, once again, 1,000 battery swap stations in China in 2023. Once again, improving their customer service, getting more people involved in their brand and their company and etc. And I also believe that this will help them really, really improve as years go on in terms of customer service and what they can provide for others. I also want to note that NEO noted that since they began deliveries of their ET7, the EL7 in Europe uh, and the EL7 in Europe, the open minds and hearts of our new community friends have warmed us. So very awesome Awesome stuff that Neil is reminding us about on their Twitter page. We'll just have to be very patient now to see how this ends up improving the company. But for the short term, I don't think that Neil is just going to explode instantly. I do think it has some potential to try to balance and get above $10 again. Maybe tomorrow it might try that because of the fact that it is very oversold right now. It came down pretty hard even today, despite the fact that the market did try to balance. It did end up coming down and there wasn't really too much very negative news. I'm going to double check on that because I was looking at the headlines. I didn't really see anything. You know, there's not really too much that came out that was way too negative. Uh, we did actually saw massive pension funds buying into NEO very recently. So we actually got more good news than bad news. And yet we did see this thing come down, likely because of shorting, likely because of maybe shorts uh, you know, piling in. And also because of the options chain, right? Because we did see a lot of retail buying into NEO calls very recently, especially for Friday's expiration. And that, as a result, is leading to more pain. What am I seeing for tomorrow? Well, NEO's major support is that we have some support at 9.7. Then there's the 9.5 to 9.58 zone. That's a demand zone. That's where the major support is. Break below that, then we have 9.28, 9. Then we have the 8 coming after that. The resistance is currently at about 10. Then we have 10.5 being the next major one. We do have some at 10.3, but 10.5 is going to be bigger. 10.8 and then 11.3. So overall, it could go either way depending on the PCE data, but seeing how oversold it is and the fact that the market does have potential to bounce because we are getting a bullish divergence forming on SPY. We actually have a bullish divergence right over here. Uh, you can see it. Let me just show you where this is. Right here, based off where the RSI is, we are forming it because you could see we made a lower low right here relative to these lows, and yet the RSI is actually holding up better than these levels way back here. So this is telling me that, once again, the market is likely going to try to get a bounce. Right here, you could see nice uptrend right here, nice downtrend in SPY, bullish divergence likely going to play out very possible and there is an increased probability of the market trying to bounce tomorrow now just remember anything could happen the market could crash tomorrow pce could crash the whole market or it could cause the market to rally one last time temporarily for a couple of days all right i want to make that very clear the odds are favoring the market trying to bounce tomorrow trying to push up it's a little bit more likely Am I promising it? The answer is no, but it is a very possible. And it's a little bit more likely the market is going to try to bounce. That tells me that, look, be prepared for anything in the markets in NEO, but it's a little bit more likely that NEO is going to try to get back to $10, maybe a little bit higher tomorrow. We should try to do that tomorrow, maybe close a little green. But I also want to note that you have to be prepared for what's going to come later on. Even if the markets turn green tomorrow, even if the market gets a mini rally, completely normal but that does not change the fact that the bigger picture when you zoom out of the charts right the much larger picture is still more on the bearish side all right we could get a temporary bounce and try to push up yes we could do that with the pce data coming out but but that doesn't change the fact that later on over the next few weeks 
the market's going to likely continue to see more downside. Look at the bigger charts. You can see we got this crossover on the MACD. We're also seeing the RSI declining. We have a downtrend that's being respected. And we saw this thing actually test major levels of support. So once again, we have so much news coming out. I just want everyone to be prepared for tomorrow. Expect a big move. And remember, PCE is coming out one hour before the market opens. We also have lots of Fed speakers later on. So once again, please be ready. And with that said, I want to thank each and every one of you for listening. Please have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. And remember, those who are patient often have the edge. Neo to the moon because the long-term future is very, very bright. And peace out.